Hello and welcome to the fundamentals of electrical power systems for biorefinery. Today I will give you a short, short insight and overview about the basic technologies for transport and distribution. So about how does the electrical energy and electrical power get from the source to the sink, from the generator to the consumer. We all know the overhead lines, which we can see to our left side. They are constructed for small voltages to medium voltages, high voltages, extra high voltages. And there's a common rule by which you can determine what is the transport voltage of a given overhead line. The rule of thumb is that one meter is 100 centimeters is 100 kV of system voltage. Such an overhead line is constructed from the steel towers. From the steel towers we have hanging down these insulators and on, at the bottom of the insulators there are these wires. So for the wires it is important to note that the core of all overhead lines is constructed of iron cables and iron wires because they give the mechanical sustainability. And around it we have the conducting material which is usually aluminum. Then beside all the electric active wires we have on top of it, as we can see here, on top of it we have the earth wire. The earth wire acts something like a surge arrester. So when a flash of lightning comes down, it, we do not want that it hits the electrical wires that transport the electrical power, but it will go into this shield wire or earth wire and there it is transported away from the point of the spark over. It can be seen here, for example, if there's a flash of lightning of 30 kilo amps that goes straight into the tip of such a overhead pole, line pole, then the current is divided into three parts. One goes to the one side, the one to the other side, and a third goes down through the pylon. If this pylon has a bad or a high grounding resistance, we have a built up of voltage, which is called a reverse voltage, and that may cause a spark over from this now energized steel pylon into the life wire that is called the reverse flash over. Another technology is cables. Cables for low voltage, medium voltage and high voltage. Such a cable is constructed in, in, in the way that we have the conductor in the center. Around the conductor we can see we have the insulation which is made of polyethylene and um, other material and then that is important we have around it another shield conducting shield the so-called shield wires or shield which is important to restrain the electricity inside of the cable the electric field and the electric current in case of a fault. So these are the different cross sections just to give you an overview and this is the, the representative substitute circuit of a cable. A cable has a resistance, that is the copper resistance or the aluminum resistance. Then it has an inductance because each loop, and the cable forms a loop, a loop can be assigned to an inductance. Then we have some leakage resistances, for example, bad insulation uh, strain, uh, pieces. And then we have the capacities of the cables. Sometimes it is important to note that also electric cables have electric magnetic fields because many people are afraid of electromagnetic fields that they may harm their health. But we calculated, and that is well proven by measurements as well, that the magnetic field strength, which is the maximum directly above such a cable, is far below the allowable limit values. The last element we want to talk about is the transformer. A transformer has two windings, one on the so-called primary side, another one at the secondary side. If you apply at the transformer at the primary side a voltage, you generate a flux which is related to the voltage according to the induction law. This flux goes through another winding and in this winding we generate a secondary voltage which in turn, if we connect a resistor to it, will allow a current to flow. Now for the voltages and current there is a law that says the primary voltage to the secondary voltage is, has the same ratio as the primary winding to the secondary winding. 
and for the current is exactly vice versa. You see this, and p and p. And what is interesting, if you multiply these two equations, you find that the primary voltage times the primary current is the same as the secondary one, which means that the power that is imported into a transformer is the same as the one that goes out. So that means a transformer does not store energy. So this is another contribution to the rule that electrical grids themselves, they do not store energy. They just transport energy, they transform it, but they do not store it. So this was the basic technologies for transport and distribution. I thank you very much, and if you are interested in further details, please have a look at the script.